If you take a minute to think about site selectivity and electrophilic aromatic substitutions of substituted benzenes, you might get a little bit concerned because a monosubstituted benzene has three distinct sites where substitution could occur. The orthocarbons, the metacarbons, and the paracarbons. And barring something else going on, pure statistics is going to suggest we're going to get a messy mixture of ortho, meta, and para substitution with presumably a little bit more ortho and meta substitution due to the two to one ratio of these positions relative to the para position. In fact, the rule in electrophilic aromatic substitutions of substituted benzenes is that site selectivity, and often very strong site selectivity for one or potentially two of these sites, is often observed. That's a good thing synthetically. That means we can synthesize selectively, for example, an ortho-substituted or a meta-substituted benzene. And in this video, we're going to understand the origins of site selectivity and electrophilic aromatic substitutions of substituted benzenes. Using resonance and a careful evaluation either of the starting aromatic or the sigma complex that results after coordination of the electrophile, we can see why certain sigma complexes are favored over others. Let's start with some interesting observations of electrophilic aromatic substitutions of different substituted benzenes. When aniline reacts in electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions, we don't get a statistical mixture of the different possible products. Instead, we observe only two products, the ortho-substituted and the para-substituted, with essentially none of the meta-substituted product observed. And even within these two, we find more of one than the other. Often the para-product is favored just on sheer steric grounds, since the ortho position is more hindered than the para position. We observe the same thing in reactions of anisole, the molecule here. We don't see any meta-product formed. Instead, the only products we see are the ortho and para-products. The two molecules on the right lead to a different situation. Nitrobenzene, which reacts considerably more slowly than the two molecules on the left, gives only the meta-substituted product in reactions with electrophiles. And cyanobenzene displays the exact same thing. This molecule reacts more slowly than benzene and the electron-rich benzenes on the left-hand side and gives only the meta-substituted product. What appears to be happening then is that these substituents, NO2 and CN, are directing substitution to the meta position. In the left-hand cases, the NH2 substituent appears to be directing substitution to the ortho and para positions, while the methoxy substituent also seems to be directing substitution to the ortho and para positions. And so we refer to the NH2 and the OCH3 substituents as ortho-para directors since they are directing the electrophile to bond at those positions, and we refer to the cyano group and the nitro group as meta directors because they are directing the electrophile to bond at the meta position. What is it exactly about these substituents that causes these directing effects? Well, let's look at a few more examples. Here I've laid down all the electron donating groups and withdrawing groups that we've previously seen in a video on substituted benzenes. What we can notice is that all of the electron donating groups, which are in this table on the left, direct substitution to the ortho and para positions. And almost all of the net electron withdrawing groups that we've previously seen direct substitution to the meta positions. The one apparent exception, which isn't really an exception, is the halogens, such as Cl and Br, which direct ortho-para, but are electron withdrawing overall due to their strong inductive effect. The general idea that does always hold is that groups that are electron withdrawing by resonance are always meta-directors. Everything in the right-hand table, aside from the halogens, is electron withdrawing by resonance. All of these have the general structural pattern that we would expect of a group that's electron withdrawing by resonance, a polarized xy pi bond where y is more electronegative than x. On the other hand, groups that are electron donating by resonance are always ortho para directors. We can see that all of the groups in this table fit our general pattern for a resonance donating group, something with a heteroatom with a lone pair that can occupy a p orbital and thus be donated into an adjacent pi system. 
these are all ortho para directors. This isn't a fact worth memorizing because it's not difficult to understand why resonance donating groups are ortho para directing while electron withdrawing groups are meta directing. Let's look at each case in turn to understand why. Let's start with the electron donating case, and the prototypical example I've chosen is phenol, a molecule with an electron donating hydroxyl group linked to a benzene ring. There are two equivalent ways to understand why benzene substituted with an electron donating group tend to react in electrophilic aromatic substitution at their ortho positions. In a sense, we already know where we're going. We need to explain why the ortho positions and the para position are relatively reactive relative to the others. A good place to start is with resonance structures of this molecule that engage the substituent, since the substituent appears to be doing the directing effect. It's what's doing the business. So resonance involving the substituent should give us some insight. These resonance forms should look fairly familiar. They just involve using the hydroxyl oxygen as an electron donating group and pushing the negative charge that results on the carbons within the ring around the ring to show the delocalization of that charge over these carbons. Notice that we're seeing negative charge appear on the ortho positions and the para positions, the exact same positions that react selectively in electrophilic aromatic substitution. Why is this? Well, as the negative charge is showing us, these positions I've highlighted in red are the most nucleophilic positions within the ring. They bear the negative charge. In electrophilic aromatic substitution, the ring acts as a nucleophile, and it's most likely to do so at these positions which have negative charge in these important resonance structures. In essence, electron donating groups direct negative charge onto the ortho and para positions. And this is what causes those positions to be more reactive in reactions where the ring behaves as a nucleophile, such as electrophilic aromatic substitution. An equivalent way to think about this comes from considering the structures of the sigma complexes that result from substituting at various positions. And so I'm going to erase what's here and consider this alternative explanation as another way of understanding why electron donating groups tend to be ortho para directors. Now, rather than considering resonance in the starting compound, let's consider the nature of the sigma complexes generated when we add an electrophile at the ortho, meta, and para positions. I'm actually going to write ortho and para next to each other since we're going to find that these will both lead to relatively stable sigma complexes and put meta at the bottom. Now I'm going to draw all the resonance structures of the possible sigma complexes when an electrophile E plus adds to phenol at the various possible positions. And I'm going to speed this up, but you should take some time to draw these resonance structures on your own. Shoo. All right, and there we have it. So what I've done is laid out all the important resonance forms of the three different possible sigma complexes, which you see kind of along the rows. When the electrophile adds to the ortho position, four resonance structures are generated, including one key resonance form in which the electron donating group gets involved in sharing in the positive charge. This is a really important resonance form, so I'm going to highlight it in red. The other three just show the delocalization of positive charge among the carbons within the benzene ring, which we've seen before in looking at sigma complexes. When the electrophile substitutes at the para position, we again have four total important resonance forms. And once again, one of those resonance forms involves sharing the positive charge with the substituent, with the OH group. The reason this is highlighted in the ortho and para cases is that it's missing from the meta case. Substitution at the meta position results in only three important resonance forms. And in none of these does the electron donating hydroxyl group get involved in stabilizing the charge. These are just the three typical resonance forms of a sigma complex that we've seen before. Because the sigma complexes resulting from ortho and para substitution have more important resonance forms than the one that results from meta substitution, it's these two reaction pathways that are favored over meta substitution. So to summarize, although this looks like a lot to take in, ultimately what this is telling us is that the sigma complexes 
derived from ortho and para substitution are more stable due to resonance than the sigma complex derived from meta substitution. Let's look at the electron withdrawing case, which are meta directors. And once again, we're going to talk about this from two different angles. Resonance in the original starting aromatic and resonance in the sigma complex is generated after substitution. So with an electron withdrawing group like the cyano group, important resonance structures of this molecule are going to contain positive charge within the ring and negative charge within the electron withdrawing substituent. What these resonance structures show us is that the electron deficient sites within this electron poor benzene are the ortho and para positions. But now let's turn around our perspective a little bit and ask about where the most electron rich sites, where the most nucleophilic sites are within this ring. Well, the only positions without positive charge are the two meta positions. Notice that in none of these resonance structures do the two meta positions ever have positive charge. This suggests that relative to the ortho and para positions, the meta positions within this electron deficient benzene are the most nucleophilic positions. And for the same reason that we just cited, specifically the ring behaves as a nucleophile in EAS reactions, we should expect the meta positions to react selectively since they are the most nucleophilic positions within these structures. Now let's take a look at the sigma complexes formed when an electrophile adds at the ortho, meta, and para positions and compare their resonance structures. Now, since we know the meta pathway is going to be favored, I'm going to put meta on the top, ortho in the middle, and para at the bottom. So here come the resonance structures, and although I'm going to speed this up, again, I recommend drawing these resonance structures on your own. Phew, and there they are. One thing to notice about the meta case is that we can't really engage the substituent in resonance since the substituent is an electron withdrawing group. And so any resonance involving the substituent is going to just introduce positive charge onto carbons adjacent to the positive charge that's already within the ring. And that's going to be a problem in terms of the stability of the resonance structure since nearby like charges points to an unimportant or unfavorable resonance form. We can also see that all three of these possibilities only have three resonance structures each. This helps explain the rate difference actually between meta-directing and ortho-para-directing substituents in EAS reactions, but it also leaves us in a bit of a conundrum. How do we explain then the difference in favorability? It can't have anything to do with the number of resonance forms since we have three resonance forms for each of these. Three for the meta-sigma complex, three for the ortho-complex, and three for the para complex. What's going on here? Well, the key resonance structures here really are actually in the ortho and para sigma complexes. And they're these resonance forms where we see positive charge located on the carbon that's attached to the electron withdrawing group. Here's the key form for the para adduct, and here's the key form, and here's the key form for the ortho adduct. These are actually rather unimportant resonance forms. The reason for that is that the cyano carbon, the carbon within the cyano group, is partially positively charged. This is what makes the cyano group an electron withdrawing group. And this is thus generally true for resonance electron withdrawing groups. The atom connected to the aromatic ring is electron deficient and often partially positive. The problem with these resonance forms is that they place formal positive charge adjacent to an atom with partial positive charge already. This means they're actually not great resonance forms. In other words, they're not that important to the structure of the sigma complex. They don't contribute much stability, is another way of putting it, to the ortho and para sigma complexes. Notice in the resonance structures of the meta complex that positive charge is never located on the carbon that's directly attached to the electron withdrawing group. This means that the meta complex as a whole is more stable than the ortho and para complexes, since in a rough sense it has more important resonance forms. It has three resonance forms of roughly speaking equal importance, while the ortho and para complexes have two resonance forms that are important and then a third that's actually not that important because of this charge proximity effect. This makes addition to the meta position the favored pathway and helps us see why groups that are electron withdrawing by resonance direct electrophilic substituents to the meta position.